Pokemon Legends Arceus, my review. Pokemon, ever heard of it? It's a little game by indie developer Nintendo. They released this new game, Pokemon Legends Arceus, about three weeks ago, and I'm gonna tell you all about it. Questions you may have like, is this a good game? Should I buy it? Am I gonna die alone spending my life searching for a national dex that catalogs over 1,000 Pokemon? Is that a Pikachu? And many others in this review. Okay, let's start off with the good stuff first. What did Game Freak get right with this game? Firstly, let's dive into the Pokemon themselves. The Pokemon look so good. Graphically, they look fantastic. The textures on each one, I really appreciate it. I thought they did a good job with it. Their animations, both attack and within the world, very well done. I think they're unique and I think they're true to the original designs. And also, I love watching the Pokemon actually live and breathe within these different environments. Specifically, my favorite is Krikato, when you sneak up on them and then they sense you coming and they just run away. It is my favorite little animation. They are so cute and as one of the first Pokemon that you encounter, this animation sold it to me. Next up would be the environments and I thought the environments were pretty good. They were very diverse and you have several different environments to explore within this game. Now some of the environments can get a little repetitive within each other, like you may have one environment with a bunch of lagoons, or one environment with a bunch of lava pools, and that can kind of repeat within each environment. Overall, you're going to experience so many unique environments and so many unique Pokemon within those environments that I would give this a thumbs up for Game Freak. They did a good job with diversifying it and making it fun to explore. Moving along, you aren't going to be having gym battles like in previous Pokemon games. Instead, you're going to be having boss battles with strengthened Pokemon that are enraged and therefore become stronger and more aggressive for you to fight. The enraged boss Pokemon are pretty varied both in their fighting style and the story leading up to them, and that was one thing that I really appreciated. You're going to be doing the exact same thing to calm them down, which is throwing balls at them, but the way that they fight and attack you and the way that you have to dodge, duck, and roll to avoid those attacks is going to be different and it's going to play differently each boss fight that you do. Now I found that these bosses had a great mixture of fun and challenge. It wasn't every time that I was able to beat them on the first try. There were several bosses that it took me one or two times to actually overcome them, and that is really cool to me. I really appreciate it when I don't automatically beat a boss or one-shot something. It just, it draws me in a little more. It puts me in that flow state, and I appreciate that. Overall, the bosses are extremely fun and unique, and while you are going to be doing the same thing, the approach within each boss is going to be different, so I really loved it. I think that you will also like that as well. How's the story? Well, the story isn't awful. It's not going to be the worst Pokemon game that you've ever played, but it's also, I've heard, not the best. For me, I thought it was just fine. I thought it was intriguing, I enjoyed myself as I was playing, and I was invested in the characters and what was happening to this world in the Hisui region. So overall, I would say that that's a positive and I enjoyed the story. I think one thing that's really cool about this game story is that you're going to be exploring the Hisui region, which is a precursor to the Sinnoh region, which is from the Pokemon Diamond and Pokemon Pearl games, or the games that were just released, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. As you're playing this game, you're going to see that there was an original Diamond Clan, an original Pearl Clan, and this Team Galaxy, which is obviously a precursor to Team Galactic, which you are actually a part of in this game. And I think that's really cool to see a beforehand look at these things before they were what we know them to be. One of the big draws to this game is this wild open area that's obviously different than the wild area of Pokemon Sword and Shield, but this is just like a breath of the wild expanse with living, breathing Pokemon within it. Now what's it like going out into the field and catching Pokemon? Well, it's pretty darn good. I've got to say that I was a little worried about going out and catching the Pokemon from several gameplays that I saw. Don't worry. It's way more accessible than you'd think it might be. You might think that it's hard, you may have hesitations, but you'll definitely get the hang of it, I promise. And on top of that, I've got to say that this catch animation for these Pokeballs is my favorite. It is the creme de la creme of all Pokemon games. It is the absolute best and most satisfying catch animation of any Pokemon game. And to prove that, here's a montage of a couple of my Pokemon catches. Now let's 
talk about exploration because exploration is one of the biggest facets of this game. In this game, you're gonna have a main quest line that they want you to complete, and they're gonna be very, very specific about how they want you to complete it. But within that, you have several side quests that are very fun. A lot of them are go grab this, go grab that. But overall, they're still enjoyable and they help you along the way because they give you good rewards. I would say that this game is a cross between Breath of the Wild, a mainline Pokemon game, and Pokemon Snap. And I believe it's like Breath of the Wild because of the exploration. It's a vast landscape with a lot of things to explore, and we've kind of come to equate an open world game that looks like this to Breath of the Wild. It's like a mainline Pokemon game because your overall goal is to fill out a Pokedex and make it the first Pokedex ever in existence. And then it's like Pokemon Snap because within that Pokedex that you're creating, you can choose a Pokemon and find several different tasks and goals listed under each that you need to complete to complete the Pokedex to its full extent. Things like Catch a Pokemon a certain amount of times. Catch a Pokemon while it doesn't notice you a certain amount of times. Battle a Pokemon and use an attack that it's weak to a certain amount of times, and so on and so forth. And similarly to Pokemon Snap, where you have to do one star, two star, three star, and four star things to complete the Pokedex, this is like that. The more you get, the more information is put into the Pokedex, and the more complete it becomes. So overall, I'd say that exploring was done well in this game, and I enjoyed adventuring within the Hisui region. Now let's touch on the controls, because this is going to lead us from the good stuff into the slightly more negative things about the game. The controls are super smooth, and I don't think there's any denying that. However, for me, and again, this is just for me, they weren't the most intuitive. And what do I mean by that? Well, to switch between your Pokeballs or your Pokemon in your party, you use the X button and then right trigger to send them out or throw the Pokeball. Many times I found myself overwhelmed because of the quick decisions I wanted myself to make, either throwing a Pokeball or releasing my Pokemon. Now even though it's right up on screen for you to see whether you're about to throw a Pokemon or a Pokeball, I found myself time and time again throwing the wrong thing. And for a game that has crafting mechanics where you need to craft the Pokeballs or buy them for a small price, I found myself doing a lot of searching for materials so that I could continue crafting those Pokeballs instead of playing the game like how I wanted to. Now again, I realize that's a me problem and I don't really have a solution. I'm sure Nintendo and Game Freak did a bunch of play testing and troubleshooting and I don't fault them for that because this is probably the best solution among all the different types of configurations it could have been. However, this was one thing that I found that wasn't the most intuitive. Smooth, yes. Intuitive, not always. Now let's talk about some of the negatives, because no game is completely perfect, save for Hollow Knight, and this game certainly has its flaws. The first flaw is the movement and traversal system, because this one is... not great. There were a lot of times that I would try to go and do something and just wouldn't be able to do it seemingly though I should. Now obviously we're not comparing this to Breath of the Wild anymore because Breath of the Wild you can really do just about anything. See a mountain? Climb that mountain. See a river? Swim across that river. In this one it feels like you should be able to do that but you just aren't. Later on in the game you'll get some Pokemon to help you either travel faster or climb or swim, but in the beginning when you may not know that it's certainly going to feel like a trudge trying to get up to certain things. One of my biggest issues was climbing. Going upwards was always a very challenging task, and yes, like I said, you will get Pokemon to make it easier, but at the very beginning and through the mid-game even, you are going to have to go up very slowly and you're going to be falling down a whole lot. This just makes for an aggravating loop of negative feedback while you're playing the game and makes it frustrating instead of fun. I will say that I like not having a stamina bar like in Breath of the Wild, but it could certainly take some cues from Breath of the Wild in making traversal easier. The other big negative that I found was the very beginning, because it is going to be an hour-long tutorial. They talk an awful lot in this game, and it's not always interesting. I will put a caveat in there and say that occasionally it is interesting, and I do enjoy it overall, 
but the amount is just incessant and unnecessary. Right at the very start, what you want to do is get out there and start catching Pokemon. They have this broad landscape for you to catch all these Pokemon, and what do they do? They sit you down for an hour-long tutorial where they're gonna talk to you about the fate of the Hisui region, how you're an outsider and they don't trust you, and how you need to actually save everybody from the great cataclysm that's about to happen. But first, go over here and talk to this person. So you'll go two steps, and you'll talk to them, and listen to them for a couple minutes, and then uh, go over here and talk to this person, so you'll do that, walk two steps, and talk to them for another couple of minutes. It feels like it never ends, and then finally you're rewarded by going out and completing your first mission on the outside world within the plains. When you do, though, it only lasts a short amount of time before you're back in the city talking with everybody again, and they never want to seem to let you free. It does get better after that first hour, and I must say that it's extremely rewarding getting to go out and accomplish missions and tasks whenever you feel like it. But I found myself sometimes dreading having to go back and talk to these people because I knew it was gonna be a several minute conversation with them. I get it's an RPG, but it's very, very talky when it doesn't necessarily need to be. Now for me, those two gripes that I have with it are negligible when comparing the overall game. I had so much fun spending time in this region, I had so much fun putting hours and hours into this game, and I'm still looking forward to putting more into it in the future. So overall, I would say that this is a great game. Will you like it? I'd say probably yes. If you like open world games, yeah, I think you should definitely give this one a shot. If you like Pokemon games, I think you should absolutely give this a shot because this is iterating on the classic formula and I believe that they will definitely be making more Pokemon Legends games. We just have to wait and see. Nintendo, Game Freak, if you're listening to me, you've got to make another one of these because this is an absolute winner that you have on your hands and I personally cannot wait to play the next one. That's it for this review. Thank you so much for for watching. If you enjoyed it, please consider hitting like and subscribe as that helps me out a whole bunch. Other than that, have a great rest of your day and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.